Hi, this is David Desert of Pancanology. I'm an engineer and a 10-year pancreatic cancer survivor. This video is for biostatistics data nerds who wished authors would publish the raw survival data for their papers. I'm going to show you how I turned published Kaplan-Meier survival curves into closely matching, if not actual, raw survival data. Using this technique, one could combine data from multiple clinical trials to perform a meta-analysis of all the trials using a particular treatment. Or we may get deeper insights into trial data that the authors don't report outright in their papers. Using the often unique event times, we can more precisely identify characteristics of groups or individuals in the trial's published results especially when multiple Kaplan-Meier curves are broken down, reconfigured, and combined with other reported data. If I've lost you already, that's okay. This video may not be for you. But be sure to check out my previous video on how to read Kaplan-Meier graphs. For this example, I've selected this paper using Olaparib as a maintenance therapy. I find the figure containing the graph and zoom it as big as my screen and copy the image into a PNG file that does no compression. This graph has several features that will make extracting the data much easier, such as lots of at regular at-risk values, censored data markers, even counts, median survival times, and PFS interval percentages. You don't have to have all those things, but they do help ver us verify and correct mistakes in the data that we're extracting. Next, I'll load that plot image I captured into a program such as GIMP or Microsoft Paint on a Windows machine. I want a program that will give me the pixel locations of various points on the graph, and I'll record those in an Excel spreadsheet that you'll see soon. I'll record the axis origin and max value pixel locations in my plot interpolation table. The spreadsheet will use this table to calculate the times and Kaplan-Meier probabilities after each event or censored item. These will become the truth values that I'm going to try to match. The first row in the spreadsheet is special in that it records how many started in the trial. The subsequent rows will have to account for all of them. I've put a green background for each cell where I need to enter data. Everything else is calculated from those entries. I'll start up here at the top of the plot and record the positions of each of the drops in the lines. Those will be the event items in this graph. I'll also record the centers of each of these circles in the line. Those will be the censored items which correspond to when the researchers lost contact with that person, such as if they left the trial. For each event and censored item on the graph, I'll measure the X and Y pixel locations in the GIMP window and record the coordinates in the spreadsheet. I'll flag this line with a 1 if it's an event or 0 if it's a censored item and enter a count of how many of those items I think are present. After all the censored items have been recorded, I have a total count at the bottom. Most likely not all will be accounted for. And this one shows we have an extra event and six missing censored items altogether. But not to worry, these are initial estimates that are going to be refined in the subsequent steps. This is where it's really helpful to have those at-risk counts from the bottom of the graph. This graph listed the at-risk counts every two months, which is quite generous of them and makes our data adjustment task much easier. It's been easiest for me to insert a row every two months and copy the at-risk line from above into this new row. Then I'll fix the time and the at-risk number on this inserted row. Now I can see that I'm supposed to have 69 still at risk at this time, but there are 71. That means in these first 12 rows, we're missing two of the six total missing items. That's a very handy information as it breaks up the adjustment task for all 50 months into a bunch of two-month adjustments. The idea is to adjust the event and sensor counts to minimize these last two columns. One is the error of just this row, and the other is the cumulative error up to and including this row. 
Eventually, we will work all the way through the data accounting for all the missing items. At the end, what we're trying to do is minimize the sum of the squared errors between the original plot and this estimate. Then I'll run through some more checks on the data. First, the median value, which is almost always provided. Then the probability estimates of the various time intervals. And the text of the paper sometimes gives us other checks as well. If you do both Kaplan-Meier curves on this graph, you can even check the harms ratios. If everything looks good so far, I'll pull all the data into R, a free statistical computing package, and generate a Kaplan-Meier survival curve from my estimated data and compare it to the paper's plot. Here I've just overlaid the two plots on top of each other after scaling them to the same size. Sometimes there's still a mistake and I can go back to the Excel spreadsheet and try and fix it. But once the graphs and all the data checks match, I call it as good as I'm going to get it without the original data and no guarantees that it's absolutely correct. So that's a quick summary of how I extract raw data from published Kaplan-Meier curves. If you do give this a try, I'd love feedback on how it worked for you. You can download and try this spreadsheet from a link in the comments section below.